For the actual prayer of blessing, just to say, a little bit earlier this afternoon, I was at the Holy Well, three or four miles down, down the road from here. That was a well which was originally associated very much with healing and the healing power of water. And here, as you can see, this was uh, associated with providing water for the poor. That's what Mr. Morris believed he was, he was doing when he had this water supply created here. It was my privilege a few years ago to, uh, to go away from this country where we expect water from the turning of a tap and uh, to spend a few weeks in Peru with which our diocese has twinned. Mm. And out there, one of the main works the church was doing was bringing water to shanty towns that had no, no water supply. Mm. And you begin to realise in those countries just how, how precious water is, whereas perhaps here we take it for granted. So with that in mind, let us pray. Mighty God, we thank you for water, for water that cleanses and revives us, that refreshes us and sustains us in life. We thank you that you brought the children of Israel through the waters of the Red Sea from their slavery in Egypt to freedom in the Promised Land. We thank you that by the symbolic waters of baptism, you assure us of the power of eternal life. And so we thank you for this water and ask you to bless it. We pray for those who have no safe and secure and healthy water supply, asking you to be close to them in their need. We pray for those who take water for granted, that they may once again appreciate its preciousness. We pray that these waters may never dry up, that they may ever stand as a sign of your eternal goodness, of your abundant blessings upon all your people, rich and poor. And we pray, as we are bound to do here, for Charles Morris and all those who have worked to bring water to places that don't have it. And we thank you for the work of churches and charities in the developing world who bring water to communities that otherwise would have none. Yeah. We pray that you'll strengthen them in their efforts and help us to support them in their work. We make these prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that. Jonathan will serenade us with, a, what is it, a 17th century? Yes, it's, it was written in uh, 1755, and it extols the uh, virtues of Malvern Water. So, uh, it was a, I uh, put a tune to this poem, um, which is in Rose's, Rose Garrard's book, uh, for the uh, St Anne's Well. Uh, it's very short, so it won't take a moment. O oh, Malvern, never envy thou the springs enrolled by fame. Since Wolsey's genius pen has now immortalized thy name. Henceforth shall rapturous poets sing of Helicon no more. The waters of thy pure husband can boast superior powers. We too of inspiration tell, as far to drink shall feel, that streams from Malvern's holy wells can both inspire and heal. Henceforth shall rapturous poets sing of Helicon no more. The waters of thy purer spring can boast superior powers. 